so much of our world is powered by electricity. But have you ever wondered what is electricity anyway? What is electricity? Vacuum cleaners. Light bulbs. TV. <laughs> not quite. You see... Cell phones. Okay, not what uses electricity, but what is electricity. Computers. Oh, oh time machines. <laughs> no. Electric ovens. Electric can openers. Electricity is a form of energy, and to understand what electricity is, we need to talk about really tiny, invisible particles called atoms and their electrons. An electron has a negative charge, and it circles the nucleus of an atom. Zip and Zap present... Scary things electricity can do. Number one, get you to Grandma's place. Oh my! Yeah. Ooh. Nope. Let's try this again. Electricity is a form of energy resulting from the flow of millions of invisible particles called electrons. I'll show you. With the help of my shrinking ray. Don't worry, shrinking rays are perfectly safe. Everything in our world is made up of tiny bits of matter called atoms. An electron is a tiny invisible particle with a negative charge. The negatively charged electrons circle the nucleus of those atoms. But some of those electrons are only weakly attached to their atoms. They're called free electrons because they can jump from one atom to another. When they jump along the atoms that make up an electrical wire, an electric current is produced. And that electric current is what we call electricity. For an electric current to start flowing, there must be a path for it to follow called a circuit. A circuit is a continuous loop of electric current flowing around and around. Like in a flashlight, for example. A battery, a light bulb, and a few short pieces of copper wire are connected together in a circuit. With the switch on, electricity flows around the circuit. If there is a break in the circuit, like by turning off a light switch, electricity cannot flow. The lamp will not light. No electricity. So the electricity in our flashlight example was created using a battery. So where does the electricity that powers things in our home every day come from? Well, in Manitoba! Scary things electricity can do. Number two. Make new friends. I'll take it from here. In Manitoba, most of our electricity comes from hydroelectric generating stations built on rivers that use the force of falling water to run a generator called hydropower. So how do those work? The hydro dams store up water. The force of falling water turns the blades of a turbine. The spinning moves the electrons from atom to atom, and this stream of electrons flows through power lines all across our province, powering our computers, TVs, appliances, and lights. Sorry, what? <sighs> Scary things electricity can do. Make giant robots run amok. Destroy, destroy. 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 <laughs> electricity is very powerful and can be dangerous. If it's not used properly, it can cause a serious shock or burn, even death. However, it is safe to use if you know a few safety rules. For example, stay away from overhead electrical wires. What about birds? What? What about birds, smarty pants? How come birds can sit on electric wires and not get all electrocuted? Yeah, how come? Well, that's easy. The reason is, well, the reason is, uh... I can answer this one. To understand why birds don't get shocked by power lines, we first need to understand the difference between conductors and insulators. Remember those free electrons flowing through a wire? Wires are made of metal like copper. Copper and other metals are good conductors. Mm. 
That means that electricity can flow through them easily because metals have lots of free electrons. If electrons can flow easily through a material, then it is a good conductor of electricity. But some materials don't have a lot of free electrons, so electricity can't pass through them freely. Those are called insulators. So what materials make a good conductor and which make good insulators? Hit it, maestro. Conductor. Insulator. Rubber. Insulator. Woo! Flagpole. Conductor. Yikes. Um, oh, I got one. Plastic. Insulator. Woo! Aluminum. Conductor. Yikes! Special kinds of glass like you'd see attached to hydro poles! Insulator. In fact, we call these insulators. Woo! Water! Conductor. Yikes! Just about anything that's wet can become a conductor. So be careful. Don't use anything electrical if you're wet or around water. So birds must be insulators. Yeah! Wrong! Birds are 70% water, and so are human beings. Both are excellent conductors of electricity. <laughs> what? Nah! Electricity takes any and all paths it can to ground, and it will take the easiest path it can find. Don't let it be through you. Electricity will even jump to the ground if it's close enough. When birds are sitting on power lines, they're conducting electricity, but they're not touching the ground. If a bird were touching a power line and the ground at the same time, it would complete a circuit and the bird would get electrocuted, causing severe injury or death. Birds can also complete a circuit by touching two power lines at the same time. Dare you? Double dare you? Double dog dare you? Chicken? Sap? No. Stop it. Electricity can kill you. Kill? Yes, kill. Dead? Dead! Wet feathers conduct electricity. Yes, wet anything conducts electricity. Not safe, you're still holding the feather. Not safe, not safe, not safe! Now do you believe me? Don't ever go near a power line again, okay? Okay. Should we do the safety rules? Zip and Zap present safety rules. Stay away from down power lines. If you see any power line that has fallen down, assume it is not safe and stay at least 10 meters away. That's the length of most school buses. Yeah, that far back. And call 911 to report it. If a power line falls on your car or school bus, stay inside. That's right. The electricity from the wire could be running through the vehicle and the ground, making it dangerous to get out. Remember, stay inside the vehicle. It's the safest place to be. Call 911 and wait until Manitoba Hydro shuts off the power. And tell others to stay at least 10 meters back to prevent an electric shock. But what if the car is on fire? That's a great question. There is a way to exit safely, but remember, this is only if you have to get out because your life is in danger. Open the car door and jump clear without touching the car or the ground at the same time. And land with your feet together. Then, hop, keeping your feet together, or shuffle without lifting your feet. Keeping them touching until you're about 10 meters away. Or the length of a bus. Obey the signs. These signs, they mean what they say. Stay away. This is an electrical substation. The fence around it is there for a reason. Everything inside is dangerous. Never climb over a substation fence. If you kick a ball over that fence, call Hydro to have a worker get it out. This is a transformer. You might see one around your neighborhood. They are always padlocked closed. 
That's because there's enough electrical current inside to cause serious injury. If that padlock is missing, don't open it. Call Manitoba Hydro to report it. And this is a hydroelectric generating station. Never swim or play near one. The rocks are slippery and the water levels around a generating station can change fast, causing turbulent waters and strong currents, so it isn't safe for boats or fishing. Obey all signs posted around a generating station. Stay away from overhead power lines. Stay at least three meters away from power lines. Electricity can jump or arc if you get too close. Wood isn't normally a conductor unless it's wet or dirty. Trees are full of sap, which is made up of water. This means that a tree can conduct electricity. Remember, if you're going to climb a tree, make sure there aren't any power lines near it. Look up first and live. Flying a kite, balloon, or a drone? Make sure any overhead power lines are far away and never release a foil balloon into the sky. It can get tangled in overhead wires and cause a power outage in your neighborhood. And remind your parents, ladders, farm equipment, anything that's tall enough can contact overhead power lines if they aren't watching. Click before you dig. Manitoba Hydro may have power coming to your house through underground cables. Natural gas pipes can run through your yard as well. What's natural gas? Don't know. So before anyone in your home digs a hole for a fence, a sprinkler system, to plant a tree, or anything, tell a parent to search click before you dig and book what we call a line locate. And Manitoba Hydro will send someone to check for buried power or natural gas lines. Hitting an underground line can cause electrocution or an explosion. What's that smell? I don't know. I got this one. Natural gas isn't a fart. It's a fuel used in some areas to run furnaces and appliances. But for your safety, Manitoba Hydro makes it smell like a fart. <laughs> what? Natural gas is actually odorless, no smell. So we make natural gas smell like rotten eggs, so you'll know if there's a leak. What's rotten eggs smell like? <laughs> you. If you smell rotten eggs, leave the building first, then report it to Manitoba Hydro or 911 from outside or from your neighbor's home. Never use a phone, flick a light switch, or do anything that could ignite the gas. It might explode. Remember, smell, leave, and tell. Natural gas smells like rotten eggs, but carbon monoxide or CO doesn't smell like anything at all. That's why every home should have a carbon monoxide alarm, like this one. And if it goes off, dangerous carbon monoxide gas could be building up in your home. This can happen if a gas appliance or furnace is not working properly, a barbecue or camp stove is being used indoors, or a vehicle is left running in the garage. Carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas that can make you feel sick, like you have the flu, but you won't have a fever. And breathing it in for too long can be fatal. That's why every home should have a carbon monoxide alarm on each level, especially close to where you sleep. And if it goes off, get your family outside to fresh air and call Manitoba Hydro or 911 for help. Tell them if anyone feels sick. And speaking of safety around the house, we got it. Keep safe, stay alive because we love you. Don't stick your knife in that toaster Unless you've unplugged it first Keep those cords, keep those wires away from rugs You'll start a fire Keep safe, stay alive because we love you Don't dry your hair when the floor is wet Don't use a charger near a pool Don't flick a switch when your hands are down Keep safe, stay alive because we love you Electricity hurts when you don't know what you're doing It can even kill you before you learn to drive So play it safe and avoid electrocution Be smart because you don't want to die Don't charge that laptop on your bed That pillow there, that's for your head Don't overload the outlet Use a 
an empty one instead. If you smell natural gas or rotten eggs, get everyone out. And remember, carbon monoxide's really bad for you and your pets, so tell your parents to check the alarm and get out if you hear it. Keep the furnace and water tank clear of flammable stuff and keep safe. Stay alive because we love you. I never use a damaged electrical cord. I recycle it so there's no doubt. I don't throw water on electrical fires. Give 911 a shout. And stay alive because we love you. Electricity hurts when you don't know what you're doing. It can even kill you before you learn to drive. So play it safe and avoid electrocution. Be smart because you don't want to die. Don't wanna die.